So welcome to the channel. In this video, we're taking a look at Aptos. Is this the new Solana killer or other VCs who were primarily in Solana and its ecosystem tokens about to rerun the playbook here on Aptos? So this is a new layer one protocol. It is quite intriguing due to the fact that the creators of this have parted ways with Meta, Facebook. Uh, they were working on the DM blockchain that obviously Facebook were uh, hoping to run out or roll out, but were unsuccessful in doing so. And now they've moved over to Aptos here and created this new L1. So it's kind of exciting in a way, uh, but the VC names who are involved with it, the amount of money being thrown into this, you know, it seems like a bit of a kind of circle jerk that we've seen previously, but we'll get into that. There's pros and cons with everything, of course, uh, but we'll see exactly what is behind the mask here on Aptos, or at least what we can see thus far. So diving in here, we'll start off with this, the genesis of Aptos, their mission here to create a universal and fair access to decentralized assets for billions of people. So essentially these guys are attempting to create a new layer one blockchain that can service billions of individuals, Clearly, when you come from the likes of Facebook, uh, you have lofty ambitions. You've already serviced billions of users and you believe you can do it again. Whether they can do this for real on a blockchain, that is obviously something that we are yet to see. Um, but maybe they could actually get some huge real world adoption. But obviously, they're going to come in with high expectations from their background. So they're looking to build a reliable, safe and usable blockchain, as they say in their own words here. So... Uh, this is where they talk about how they parted ways with Facebook's DM. Of course, Facebook, Libra, DM, all of that good stuff essentially was shut down due to the fact one of the largest social networks in the world to have its own currency, dollar-backed currency or dollar-stable asset on top of it would make it you know, a huge powerhouse. It was too much of a threat. Thus, that was killed off, I think, at the start of 2022. And some of the developers here who've clearly been working their pants off to actually get DM off the ground, decided to part ways with Facebook Meta, whatever you want to call them, and set up their new L1 here with Aptos, which sounds a little bit like Zapdos, as many people have pointed out on Twitter. Uh, so they departed ways, and now this Gigabrain team, Avery Ching is one of the co-founders, along with the author of the article here, Mr. Mo Sheikh. Uh, these are the kind of two founders and there's just tons of like phd uh, researchers they're going to have a very smart team on this so um one of the major pros is the fact the team's going to be super strong they're used to building out um you know front ends for uh, users to actually interact with so the ui for whatever they build out the dApps they create is probably going to be top notch uh, you can't put that past them it's whether they have you know the links for business development um what is their key vertical they're going to move into that kind of stuff has not been answered as yet uh, but it could be exciting and i think if you've got a really smart team like this um, and they're going to be able to cre create some new dApps that we probably haven't seen before in the uh, crypto space make them super user friendly you know th there's a good chance that this will have a really good shot but from what i've read through here a lot of it sounds a little bit cheesy we want to make it a safe blockchain to use it kind of sounds like they've really marketed themselves towards the VCs that have come flocking in here with, you know, an open checkbook. So this is the Silicon Angle article on it. Unwilling to accept the fate, the meta, you know, DM capitulation, ex-meta veteran employees Mo Sheikh and Avery Ching founded the startup Aptos Labs as CEO and CTO. The objective of Aptos was to resurrect DM's technology and use its coding language. So they do have their own unique selling point here. It's got its own coding language called Move to produce secure infrastructure that could rival the likes of BTC and ETH, they say here. So interestingly enough, the USP is the fact they've got their own coding language. And if they've got uh, maybe a small team or they've got employees over at you know Facebook who can use this coding language, maybe they can headhunt a few more. Uh, you could have uh, really interesting apps being built out by super talented individuals. Uh, so there could be a great pool of talent that could come across to this. So I think this is the main USP and the thing that would potentially be, you know, the meme of next cycle when you say that these guys are from Facebook, they can create these huge applications and bring in millions of users. You can already see the headlines. You can see the way people will market this one in the next cycle. So I think there's 
uh, good opportunity potentially within this. But there's also a lot of question marks as well, which we'll go into. Uh, so Kyle Samani, so one of the Solana links here. Kyle Samani, massive investor, seed investor of Solana, now has you know pitched in here and started to invest in Aptos. This is his quote here. Um, so Kyle Samani says, I love the fact that they said, fuck this. Like, I don't care what Facebook and the government says, we're gonna make this happen. So Kyle Samani, uh, rather bullish, he was famously quoted as saying, we've been on the phone with billionaires around the world and they can't wait to invest in Solana. Well, maybe this time he's pushing the uh, bandwagon shilling uh, is gonna come thick and heavy here for Aptos as he has, you know, his seed round investments uh, now tied in. So you can see from this article as well, $200 million funding round from A16Z back in March. And there's been a load more uh, recent funding as well, which we're gonna jump into. If we just look at the website though, Aptos, building the safest and most scalable layer one blockchain, you know, that kind of marketing uh, coming in here, super slick design. I like the colors, of course, the user, interface everything that is presented to us is going to look super cool due to the fact you know the experience of these guys uh, not too much in terms of info on their website unless you are a developer there's plenty uh, of resources and github stuff you can dive into but nothing of real interest as of yet and they haven't really uh, put their finger down on what their key vertical is going to be at this point in time over on twitter the usual stuff but they do have quite some you know Notable partnerships here, the likes of Binance Labs um, and a few other uh, layer ones as well, which makes me feel like, you know, uh, they're going to be welcomed into the uh, multi-chain future and this, you know, <laughs> never-ending L1 race. So one of the things to be aware of going into the next cycle, this is going to have a nice narrative. It's an easy sell marketing-wise as well, um, which is intriguing due to the fact it's probably going to run hard. When you have the big investors, the real money bags behind it, they can put together a huge, you know, war chest to drive incentives and drives users to the platform. And with the Facebook kind of reach, I think they're going to see, you know, you're going to have it over all the main um, news sites, all the main YouTubers, etc. Will have definitely something to say about Aptos. So it's intriguing on that level for sure. And at the end of the day, when you look into to crypto and the game that it is and how the cycles work, you know, this could well be a decent one to look at once we know the tokenomics. Um, this is going to be, you know, really important. What the heck are the tokenomics? We don't have a clue at this point because it hasn't launched on mainnet. There's been uh, no announcement of the token, hence the CoinGecko, you know, preview only at this point. Uh, but that is something we need to really look into. Uh, once this goes live and with all the VCs that are currently involved if they've been putting in hundreds of millions of dollars they're going to probably soak up the vast majority of the coins so the similarity with Solana where you have VCs filling their bags with not only Sol but all the ecosystem tokens and they just go down only you're just getting dumped on by VC money this is well and this is probably what's going to happen with this one and that's my fear for this one uh, in terms of other USPs and what they're trying to go for here um, there's many references to this 160,000 TPS would be possible so you know bigger faster quicker that kind of thing we hear this previously for you know Solana being the ETH killer but it sounds like this is positioning itself to be the Solana killer for this next cycle with the quicker you know this kind of narrative instant finality 160,000 transactions per second built for billions we have heard this all before um, so not to take away from this too much, but you can see the marketing uh, that's going to be coming out for this one uh, as clear as day. So kind of interesting. If we just jump to this one, this is what's really caught my attention is over the last couple of days, you've seen uh, FTX do the news rounds with their investment into Aptos here. So it says XDM developers raise an additional 150 million from FTX Ventures and Jump Crypto. So two of the biggest VCs are now on board. So Aptos Labs is now valued at around 2 billion. Not even launched just from what we can see thus far, the marketing behind it, it's already got a $2 billion valuation, which is incredible. This is obviously as well off-putting in my opinion. We'd rather see fair launches. You'd rather see a load of tokens going to community, but it does seem that when we get the tokenomics 
uh, is probably going to be heavily skewed for these VC investors. So do be aware of that. But I still think, you know, there could be great opportunity within this because they need exit liquidity uh, during the next cycle here. Mainnet scheduled for September of 2022. So founded less than a year ago, they raised 200 mil from A16Z and cumulatively now have over $350 million um, and reached a valuation of $2 billion. So some big names behind this, the likes of Multicoin, that's Kyle Samani's ventures, um, the likes of uh, Griffin Gaming Partners and Circle Ventures as well down here. So all the big guys are in the room with this one. Uh, this will be, you know, a reason for pumpamentals that people will reference. But we've seen this before in the last cycle. When you have all the same VCs in every single funding round, it's not a recipe for success. Typically, you just know the names that are going to be dumping on you. So uh, there's many cons and many pros to this one. Let's just jump into this. So some banter on Twitter. What does Aptos do? Serious question. And then crypto cred down here. L1s are racehorses for incumbent, overfunded, bourgeois VCs. Run them, milk them, find a new one. And once the old one has run its course, repeat ad infinitum. So making the point down here that we've seen this all before, it's all cyclical. Aptos, this L1 just could be the next cycles, you know, big thing, the new Solana, that kind of stuff. So if we just look at the game of crypto for what it is, you know, there's, you know, banter on this level here, you know, showing that it could well be the VC dump fest, but there is a game to be played as well, potentially. So, you know, eyes peeled for this. What is the kind of USP they're going for? Well, as you can see from the chart here, time to finality, less than one second, max transactions per second, 160,000, i.e. they're saying it's going to be faster and more scalable than the others. So the kind of USP of Solana, now we've just like one upped it here with Aptos. So you can see my kind of skepticism as to uh, it seems just like the VCs are playing the game of let's spin up a new L1, let's get traction behind this one. We'll play the game again and see exactly, you know, how much money we can make from retail plebs. And then we have this to, to finish up here. So Hasaka Trades put together a bit of a bingo card um, for Aptos here. So he talks about a $1 billion plus incentivization or eco fund, a nine figure metaverse or NFT fund, technical issues and downtime just being put down to, you know, routine problems around this new tech. And then he says, Shamath and co joke about dumping their Aptos position via multi-coin on retail. If the token launches at less than 1% circulating supply, you know, you got the likes of FTX in here and some of the other ones who are renowned for getting these high fully diluted valuation uh, entries and the same cabal of three or four VCs in each of the you know projects that might launch on top of this. So hilarious stuff. Um, but of course, do be aware of all of these things when we see what happens with Aptos, how it rolls out and the potential dApps that come to it. Because if we see the same playing book as we saw with Solana and its um, altcoins, you know, it's something that retail really should stay away from. So overall, at this point in time, it's a proof of stake blockchain. It's going to be faster, scalable, and apparently safer. Um, it's got Byzantine fault tolerance that was developed by uh, DM, i.e. Facebook. It has developers from Facebook. So I think they could build out some really cool dApps. Issues probably going to be around tokens. How are they going to vest? how many what percentage of uh, the total supply are these vcs who have just put in a load of millions of dollars what are they going to get and are they going to be dumping on retail's heads so the game certainly not up here but the new l1s for the next cycle are slowly revealing themselves here and we're seeing the vcs start to position themselves so headweight being made if you enjoy this one subscribe to the channel and if you are a new subscriber drop a comment down below introduce yourself and I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.